and I wonder if that's something we end up seeing today as kind of one of those potential weird curveballs, right? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But ahead of Tristana, ahead of Corky, a Leona first pick here for anyone's legend. So a lot of priority on what Leona can bring as a pick. Yeah. And uh, in many ways, it's kind of turning into the new Nautilus at the minute here in the LPL. And, and you see it catch a lot of early rotation bans too. Ezreal as well today seems to have skyrocketed in priority because in the first series we never saw it played, but we saw it banned a yeah. ton. So definitely something that Dogdom's going to be very comfortable playing. Milky Way gets a carry jungler in that of the brand. Ezreal immediately answered by Hope with a Ziggs full demo squad alongside the Tristana. All right, so for AL, Grubs could be a very big priority. Uh, you mentioned the Ezreal as well as being that uh, you know, rocketing up in, in priorities. We saw it banned all three games. Did catch pretty serious buffs. Uh, I think it was 14-12. Either way, it was one of the most recent patches. Either this patch or the patch before, but huge increase to uh, the damage ratio. I think 10% added on uh, to his Mystic shots, of course. And it just ramps up that DPS over time. Yeah. Uh, and we were already um, seeing so... Israel before that buff. <laughs> we were seeing Israel yeah, at 14 we like to see him creep so... in. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see if that continues to skyrocket. Jack's taken away from Ala, not too surprising. I think most teams fear Jax on Ala, or Ala on Jax, I should say. We'll see if it is going to be another top lane ban. I mean, Renekton's already gone, Rumble's already gone, Jax is already gone. It feels like that pool is being pinched, but Cassante and Scarlet are both maybe. still yeah. up. Yeah, so yeah. we will be Zyra taken away from Croco in the end. Yeah, it seems like the Skarna priority has fallen off since, uh, of course, the nerfs in 14 13, which makes him a little bit less oppressive inside of lane. Still a very obnoxious champion. Yeah. Do not get it twisted. <laughs> but uh, no longer does it seem to be that you know blue one priority. Look, this or a is <laughs> priority. I I don't think that they were enough. There's a reason I'm never going to be a Riot's balance team. But I think that this champion should have been gutted and removed from my screen. Uh, I don't <laughs> play it, and therefore I hate it. Uh, yeah, I've never I've never been very. Uh, there's not much of a gradient for me with champions. They're either great or they're terrible. There's there's really not much middle ground. <laughs> Uh, Rakan going to be taken off the board, and that opens up for this Rel, potentially for life. Being engaged all very good at uh, potentially denying engage as well, or at least countering the engage of Leona later on. Yeah, it's very, very flexible in that regard. A lot of uh, picks being hovered here, but I think AO realistically want a bit of engage out of their jungle slot right now. And I mean, honestly, I think everything that Hope just hovered for Croco could fit into the composition right now that AL have. They land on the Karthus, so it's going to be double AP uh, shared between the Ziggs and Karthus, Hope and Croco. And uh, they'll round out with this Cassante. I feel so, like yeah. AL have just gone, okay, what's an S tier pick in each role? Let's just lock that. Yeah. Ah, who yeah, cares if it's a comp? Let's just do that. Just pick like, the best, yeah. best champion in each lane. Yeah, looks all right. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, Cassante, though, does round out the composition really nicely. Very strong team fighting. We know what the champion does. There's a whole copy pasta. Uh, and it will be. <laughs> uh, and the Shal who will be locking in. Nah, just to go one to one of it. Very strong in lane. Uh, the windows to all in Nah, obviously, you know, it's basically I... mini, but still can be a bit hard to find. Did I miss a memo? Where did Nah come from? There were no I... changes to Nah. How did he. I guess it's just in the absence of Skarna, this is the pick that has risen to the top of the pile. I suppose that explains the Renekton bands we've been seeing today as well. Without yeah. Skarna. Uh, just finding things that can answer I, this Cassante without I, having to lock a TF in the top lane. I, I will certainly say, I feel like Nar is always kind of, he's a comfort pick for a lot of top laners. He always yeah. kind of remains on the cusp of, like, being Viability, meta, being yeah. blind pickable and viably. Uh, and, you know, he's been in the game, what, nine years now? Gosh, that makes me feel old. Uh, <laughs> players are just used to playing with him, right? So whenever there's room for it, teams will always find it. But I do agree that Big rise in priority on the Nart today. And I wonder if that's going to continue throughout 14 13. But for now, Shalahu will be piloting it and we'll see what he can get done into Ala on the Kasante. See if he can make something happen. Ala, a player that has made big impacts on the Kasante previous series. But I'm looking at the rest of the map as well. I'm looking at these carry junglers. I'm looking at the Ezreal versus Ziggs in the bot side as well. Both teams with reasonable compositions that have significant power later on into the game and there's a lot riding on this series both teams wanting to come into group ascend and make 
an impact. They want to show that they are here to play, that they are a contender for those four spots going into the World Championship. AL versus FPX coming to your screens right now. All right. Are here. They certainly are, <laughs> big time. <laughs> they are here to scream from the top of their lungs right now. Let's talk early game win conditions here. It feels like this could be, you know, whenever there's a Ziggs and a Tristana in a game, I feel like there's always that, that one breaking point where suddenly seven towers fall simultaneously. Like, what is the game plan for AL to, to get to that point? Yeah, there's a lot of room for early aggression here, I think, for AL. Uh, not only just having Kyle uh, on this Leona, but, you know, Croco should be able to build up a bit of a tempo lead here. And between Shanks and between Hope, you'd like to believe that uh, they should be able to use those little bit of win few windows where they'll have Croco in the back pocket. To try and uh, hit on those towers. Get some early rotations in. Shalahu gets a little bit too comfy. Won't eat the lay waste, but uh, Croco will just go and return to farming. And Allah will get an all right trade up here. Desperate yeah, I means that, that grass proc. Yeah, in theory, he'll be happy with that. Unfortunately, it does take a bit of extra damage on the back of it. But it was always going to be a tough level one against Nara's Cassante. So just being able to get a couple of grass procs, I think he'll be happy with in that top side. You can see jungles pathing opposite to one another here so keep our eyes on milky way if he can get into this top lane milky way has been a player that regardless of matchups regardless of what champion he's on he's quite happy to go for these early lane ganks we quite often see him trying to move into that top lane we'll see if ala can find a window shall i who hit level two though this is the uh, boulder unfortunately for him but still massive damage onto ala ala has got to be a little bit cautious how he approaches this now Health disadvantage. Of course, Nara as well has that. Uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't call it pseudo sustain. It's technically sustained. Mega Nara, you get the percent health back, all that stuff. So, uh, Arlen needs to be careful with how he trades his health at times, but Doran Shield probably got second wind. He'll be alright. He's Kasate after all. Shouldn't be stressed at all. But, nah, again, no. he's going to be up here weak siding for, for a little while, unfortunately. He certainly will be. On the side of FPX, though, a lot of poke with the Ezreal and the Corky. It, it's, it's funny, isn't it? They changed Corky. The first build we saw was like this lethality, dominate lane kind of style. And now we've kind of gone, dare I say, back into the same version of Corky as before, where it's all you know, like you don't have the package anymore, but we're pretty much always seeing this it's... kind of poke style Corky where you want to stay at range and you want to just blast out these heal shots. Yeah, you want to be able to get out as many, you know, uh, big one rockets as, as possible. The build is still a lot more closer to, you know, traditional Triforce Corky, right? Yeah. Uh, Miramana, all that good stuff. As uh, Shanks takes a step forward, a lot of heavy trading. We've seen that a lot in this matchup today. Yeah. And we've seen it a lot in the matchup throughout the summer split so far. But uh, yeah, I, I do agree. It does tend to end up leaning into kind of a close to pokish playstyle, but it just gives you the option to. Uh, the build that is to you know get close and up and personal yeah make those plays happen it's not got a bad amount of all in on the back of all of that poke as well as doctor going aggressive Ooh. flash for flash in the bottom side and then kale gets involved as well stockton gets out with his life but hope kind of chilling throughout that whole thing just lobbing bombs the whole time that's going to be two flashes for a flash and a cleanse <laughs> all things considered everyone okay. walks away but a lot of summoners yeah now a hex flash onto hope Okay, nice CC chain and Hope actually gonna get the door. He's just gone! Fantastic wow. bit of play from the FBX bottom lane. Gale looking for the return. Oh no, he hits the ward! The ward placed in front of him and it's a double kill for life! It's a disaster for anyone's Legends bottom lane there. Hope gets caught out by the Hex Flash. Fortunately for him, he's got teleport so he won't miss out on this wave. But he hits the ward of all things. Misfortune for AL. It's fortune for FPX, and they're going to start off this game two kills up. I suppose fortunately for anyone's legend, the kills both go on to life, but the damage is still done. Hex Flash, Kale's just a bit slow to check this bush. Also just kind of being, you know, tentative, which yeah. makes a whole bunch of sense in that kind of setup, but it's just this ward placement. And and it, I ah. mean, great. Great to place that one, right? It's not like he needs vision in that brush. They no, know no, no. that Kale is attack moving, so sees the opportunity. Shanks, level six. 
doesn't go for the buster shot onto care maybe would have killed i don't think so not quite it was about 250 hp remaining but with life in the lane uh, obviously shanks has to back away i'm keeping my eyes on shanks because he has had a good amount of solo kills in that mid lane across this split he's close to first for mvps as well it's uh it's been a, a tight race for mvps actually across this split so far uh with a few players contending for that title rookie currently at eight mvps shanks on six he's in second place not far behind so keeping our eyes on shanks if we can get two mvps today we'll be able to contend with rookie for that top spot again the way and see there's a milky way he does hit level six here does edge the skirmish in their favor fpx that is all up should be all right to just walk back into lane. Might eat a bit of poke on the way out. Oh, that's not just just the pillar of flame. Nicely done there by Alla. It was uh, two grubs, though, for AL. Crocker finished the extra runs and Milky Way tried to make the play up towards that top side. Crocker will be happy just getting away with the extra grub, especially with Milky Way starting that one all off. Two kills for nothing, all down to that bottom lane play that we saw before. Octum actually going to use the True Shot Barrage. Perhaps a play coming out on the top side from FBX. Just going to hit onto the blue buff. AL backing away. Ala trying to protect his tower from underneath. There's Shanks now. Walks into two in the jungle and will be forced away by Care. Milky Way smites away the blue buff. A coordinated invade from FBX to assassinate the enemy buff. Yep, just keeping Croco as far down as they can here. Shanks, he's got a rocket jump. He's in an awkward spot right here. Gets the reset, though. We'll be okay. By exploding the bomb, so he's all right, yeah. Very, very fortunate. Milky Way, none of them really wanted to pull the trigger on blowing the flash. Could so, have been very dangerous. It could have been. Could have, would have, should have. Wasn't in the end, but I like that we're already seeing a little bit of spark from both teams, you know? They are willing to fight. They are willing to contend with one another. Two for one on those first grubs. The Drake is up on the map. You see Kale move down towards that bottom side once again. Croco is farming in that direction. Whereas Milky Way starting his clear back up towards that top side. So perhaps a window here for Croco to go for the Drake. Yeah, perhaps. But also, I feel like Croco may have been out on the map for a little while now. He may want to look for a reset after this, uh, after Krogs. Remember, didn't get blue buff, right? So he's actually gonna be true him. actually yeah after his next camp which means it's gonna be a bit difficult for him to take that dragon unless there's a uh there's a set of honey fruit waiting for him in the river but he's got prior mid and he's got prior bot does want to get the crux first so we'll see how it works out because at the end of the day milky way is like you mentioned parting top so there's not really going to be a contest from fpx here looks like he's moving that way just waiting for that bot wave to be cleared but shanks is Forced in a massive wave in the mid lane. He's going to go for a reset. Looks like it is going to be called off. So no Drake attempt here from AL. Just wanting to, as you say, finish the recalls. Get some items in play. Lost chapter picked up there for Croco. As well as uh, the tier 1 boots. And Shanks well on his way towards a Kraken Slayer. Well on his way to finishing a cull and care. Not even going for the cull in this one. So had to go for that tier. You know, it's nice to get the cull on the Corky. But you kind of do have to invest in the tier as early as you can. So... If you get a recall, you can't afford them both. That is just the way it's going to go. Ala trying to punish with the Pathmaker there. Doesn't quite find his angle. Oh, but Shallow who is really starting to batter away at this tower now. Yeah. Second plate will go down. He's still got the Molish to work with as well. FPX will get this dragon. Uh, Milky Way's had the opportunity to reset. Croco's on his top side. FPX are fully aware of this. Both the junglers have been, you know, kind of clearing in cycle from top to bottom the entire game uh but these cycles just haven't worked out for croco even though he got those two grubs uh, earlier on the milky way finds himself very close to a full level up yeah. at the minute <laughs> i have to say i said to you uh before the game when we were chatting in the break i've got a feeling this one might be uh, a slow early game that we uh might be a slow have to get through to yeah burner. because when you look at the way that these two teams have played, it has been a bit more calculated. You know, FPX in spring were quite an explosive team. I feel like, generally speaking, it's been much more standard gameplay. AL definitely uh, a team that's all about 
winning through that mid game and through that late game. So not too surprising, but here we go. Grubs back up on the map. AL even going to TP a player in here to make sure that they're a part of everything. Hope moves in. It's one Grub for the side of FPX here, and it's one for the side of AL. They're looking for a second as well, and it looks like FPX are just going to accept defeat on this one. They've got Care pushing in that bottom side. No one on AL with a TP. So it will just be traded grubs for tower plates. Yeah, what they need to do now is try and guard AL away from this tower and give care as much freedom as they can. Life's got the memo. Need to bear back up here for Ooh. Milky Way. Sasha charge is pretty big and Hope actually just flashes away from the engage. Bomb is a little bit shy. And it will mean life walks away with exactly that, his life. Shanks moves back to the mid lane and it will just be a couple of plates in the end for care in trade for that grub. Yep up his money get himself closer and closer uh, to that triforce this is uh Arla. not shallow who maybe to the side he would have preferred less if he was looking for an all in there as the meganar times out of course this is that window where you know, as, as the Cassante, you can try and find an all in especially with the sheen damage surprisingly despite Cassante's uh burst very very high yeah but uh again it's one of those things don't need to flip it you know what Cassante is going to do later on. You just need to stay relevant in gold. Shanks. Full bomb, but Care trading back pretty effectively. Very even trade between the mid laners there as Care base checks in. But oh, I like this. <laughs> it's not getting any easier for him, is it? With life in the tri brush. But I think he'll be okay with Croco moving up into the situation. I'm not sure that this is a dive that can realistically happen. Shala, who continuing to try and get pressure down, but Ala. He's, uh, he's very good in these situations, isn't he? Uh, just managing to find that farm despite being under that pressure. Still manages to clear the whole wave. No TP up for him, so the lower health bar will be a problem. His vision cleared away. Milky Way once again on repeat here. Trying to get the invade onto the enemy blue buff, but Crocker will smite it. This time, FPX don't get their prize. No, not yet, but you can see FPX, they're really trying to utilize the heavy skirmishing power of the brand early on. Trying to set him up as, again, Stun. another play. Follow-up comes on in. There's the passive procced. Kale trying to get away. The Pyroclasm. Ignite ticking. The burn is not. It is enough. Milky Way grabs his first kill of the game. The third for FPX. Burns down for so long, doesn't it, Munch? Almost catches you off guard. Kale I was does looking lose at, life in the end. The problem is, I was looking for fire, but he's zombie brand. So yeah, so it turns him green. It's green. a really awkward yeah. shade. Yeah, it's a really <laughs> awkward shade. Has a oh, okay. Oh. A bit of a one v one <laughs> Strange between. Strange exchange. Yeah, Doctor and Hope there actually managed to blow Doctor's flash. As he in aggressively. Nicely done there by Hope to get pressure in the bottom side and actually got a couple of plates for himself. In the meantime, though, Shala who has done precisely his job as this night in the early game. Look at that gold lead that's in the top lane. One point six thousand gold with no kills or assists on the board that's all minions and tower plates yep wholly a self-manufactured lead very little interference from uh the rest of the map a couple of plays made around the grubs of course but that is sheerly shallow just having a better matchup and very much abusing him whittling down that tower bit by bit I'm gonna send them bot now and that lane assignment seem to be Kind of a bit off, actually, to be honest, for FPX here, because now they've got Care in the top side. Unless their intent is not to get this dragon, Care's going to have to waddle or fly his way down. Kind of a mix dragon, of both. If he wants to get skip. involved. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it looks like maybe the call is to try and contend the Herald. I don't know. Uh, Care. Okay, Valks out, oh, and wow. Requiem comes on in, all out, comes through, and they finish the job. Assassination from Ala and Croco. Now Shalahu trying to get in the mix. Ala the target, but Shalahu's gone too far. The rest of AL were on Herald already. And that's going to be Shalahu's flash and teleport. Wow. I mean, what an excellent play. All in all to find that pick. Uh, just knowing their damage through and through. The only issue now for AL is that because they use all of these tools they aren't gonna get this herald which you know you've got the double demolitionist comp you, you would love it right you would really love to have the herald it's basically a free tower when you have tristana when you have ziggs they get a free tower i suppose on that bottom side duck oh. arm 
a little bit wide from Hope. But uh, they get the Herald. Yeah. FPX. And they'll probably... Uh, no, they won't get the Dragon. That's a bit too far-fetched. So it will be one apiece. But I think FPX are relatively content with that trade. I mean, they're up in gold right now. One and a half thousand about. As it's one Drake piece. It will be an ocean soul in this one. But I feel like we are starting to get to the part of the game now where the Ziggs and the Tristana can start to really do work to towers. If AL can position well around the map and, and get the right matchups, they can take down towers exceptionally fast. Like you say, they would have loved to have that Herald. It's so nice with Ziggs. Like the, the charge into Satchel, basically one-shotting a tower. But we'll see how they play around FPX and how FPX choose to use that Herald themselves. Yeah, I just think contextually it's such a good takeaway for FPX, right? I mean, you're already trading one objective for objective. There was a couple of uh, waves and towers that fell as well. But again, just the fact that anyone's legend don't get the Herald and they just get their one Infernal Dragon, I think there's probably a little bit more value in it in the immediate future for FPX. But again, it's about what they can actually get out of that Herald. There's a lot. Probably going to get aggressed on there. We're going to drop it mid. Okay. We need a fair bit of damage here. I to think actually this ensure should... this charge kills it. With the mites, oh, I guess, yeah. It's not crying enemy enough. I wasn't sure if Doctor would be able to get another W auto in to just chunk it out. It's not quite enough in the end. True shot barrage from Doctor just to try and fight for Pryo in that mid lane. You're going to need to against that Ziggs. There's Ala perhaps looking for that 1v1 opportunity. Q3 won't land. Had it landed, perhaps an angle for an all out. TP now into the top side, coming out from Shanks. Anyone's legend of the side that they don't want Shalahu to play the game. And you know what? That's fair enough. I, I think it's pretty fair, given how strong he is. A lot of resources being diverted up here. In many ways, kind of bailing out Arla, yes, but I think preventing, you know, a very strong win condition right now of FPX inside of what could be a strong side lane uh, in Shalahu's Nar. So. I like what they're doing, as long as they don't give up too much for these rotations, right? I mean, they're losing another tower. That's kind of a big deal in terms of care. Getting back to gold relative with Shank. Shank's already at two items. Items a lot cheaper for him yeah. than they are for care, though. So, that must be mentioned. There's a lot of standing gold on the map for FPX that is just one or two autos away. In the mid lane, it's one or two autos for that tower. In the bot lane, it's one or two autos for that tower as well. Potential gold spike available for FPX if they can shift that pressure down there but Ala got to the tower just in time to defend it and the next neutral starting to come up in a couple of minutes time Ala is looking for an opportunity here care could be in trouble the stun lance he was shopping I think as Ala now perhaps a chance for an all-out requiem comes on through but care gets over the wall the bomb won't quite find its mark and Ala realizes the play is over dashes out to safety a little bit unlucky not to get the drag over the wall because then it, you know, kind of creates a yeah. bit of an extra space for care to use. Angle just was slightly off for Arla. But that's just the way the play shakes. They use Requiem as well. No major objective. I mean, Barrel will be up, but the likelihood of it being burst basically on spawn, I, I feel is pretty low in a game like this. Yeah. I feel like these teams as well, not necessarily the teams you think of for that. However, we have seen moments from both Milky Way and Croco to, to happily go for Shan. I'm thinking of Meteor. When I think of 20 minute Baryon, I think of Meteor. Mm. <laughs> this split with that Zyra game. That is, uh, that'll be stuck in my memory for a little old while, that one. But FPX currently feels like they are doing a decent job to maintain that lead, but AL are trying their damnedest to, to make these plays around the map. I mean, Ala trying to uh, mitigate while Hope and Shanks move to lanes and, and put pressure down, but so far they've not really been able to get these demolitionists onto the towers for long enough to actually get the damage done. And in the meantime, Shala, who does get that exact chance in the bottom lane. Yeah, my big fear, fear <clears throat> I beg your pardon, for anyone's legend, is uh, just the fact that Care and Darm, of course, both on tier champions, right? Those Muramanas, very close to being complete. Oh, Kill. chance on the bottom side. I mean, Shala, who just gets destroyed by the combo. Big damage out from Milky Way to answer, but it's not enough to finish a kill. 
And that is a potential opportunity now, as in the meantime, Ala is pushing in the top side. Nobody is there to answer him. And Shanks can push another wave in the bottom side. Drake coming up in 10 seconds time. Yeah, these waves are pretty all right for anyone's legend. To say the least, Shalahu dead. Care. We'll come up and sweep up this a bit of CS. But yeah, I mean, picks found on Shalahu. Feels really, really good for anyone's legend. And it could just mean that, you know, Dragon setup could have been all right. Allah has teleport. I still have numbers. Of course, Shalahu has teleport, but he's got to build up the rage bar, right? That's obviously a big difference. Pyroclasm's also on cooldown for Milky Way. But anyone's legend, their approach is a bit strange. Yeah. This is a bit <laughs> scattered. Chanks is just in the back of the pit on his own. Clears the vision. It's going to continue to solo this Drake as Croco steps forwards. Oh, wow. Dodging some of those skill shots. It's going to be a smite off between the two junglers. Oh. And in fact, it's Dogtum that wins the smite fight. Croco goes down. It's a kill on top of the Drake as Kale barely surviving. And Requiem answers Dogtum's crimes. It's a one for one, but it's FBX with a Drake. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> How ducked up. I mean, Duck Dom is, you know, we spoke about daylight robbery earlier on, right? I feel like Duck Dom just committed daylight robbery, to be Definitely. honest with you. Stealing away that dragon. <laughs> from, uh, like, from both. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even one side or the other. Steals it away. No smite comes down. I, well, a smite did come down. Let's, let's see who's smite. Super really slow mo. I mean, it's the it's, same frame. It's actually. It, it's the same frame, and it's Milky Way Smite. So um, now we get to call it coordinated and excellent work for FBX. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a poor on Miss Smite. Uh, yeah. from, Do you know, from them. at the end there, with the Requiem coming down... Oh, hang on. Hold that thought. Life has been caught out in the jungle. AL find themselves a pig. Baron is up on the map. Oh, my God. Is this, uh, is this where the game pace really picks up? To AL pull the trigger while they're all on the top side. Croco is making his way over. I think AL... I yeah, just look for a chance this. on the Baron. They can burst it really quickly. Tristana's two and a half items. They've got this Karthus as well. It's a lot of damage. FPX, they have to check this. Milky Way's got Paraclasm. Keep your eyes on him, but Arna's it's... on a flank. Milky Way's smite is on cooldown for a few more seconds. AL, I don't think they're aware. They're not necessarily just bursting right now. The health bars are getting low in the pits. 3k oh. on the Baron. Shanks goes for a buster shot. The bomb comes in. Baron taken by Croco. But now he's stuck in the back of the pit. The recalls trying to come on through. Croco is going to try and blast going back out to safety. But no, <laughs> knocks life away instead. He will go down, but he got Shanks out. Ala got out. Almost everyone got out. Croco and Kale die. But for a Baron, I think it's worth it. Yeah, no, definitely should be. The Demolitionists have the Baron. That's the important part, right? Get those guys out. Everyone else is secondary. FPX lose out on the Baron there. It was very, very sketchy from anyone's legend towards the end of that, especially with Milky Way having ultimate, but no big combo comes out by the end of it. Very, very apprehensive because of Arla's positioning. Just means that FPX don't really commit forward for a long while. Shalohu gets Buster Shoyed out, and then it kind of puts him in a position as well where he can't really threaten the pit. And it then has to man mark Arla. And then on the back end of this, Croco <laughs> can't reset because he got hit by an ability from Brand. So he's just burning for a very long time, unfortunately, for himself. Yeah. I love and that reset. Blast gun, of course, hope. looks really, really funny. Yeah, the reset from Hope as well. Like, literally, last split second as Charlotte, who face checks into the brush. Hope just literally praying for his life right there. And he will get out. Gold is pretty much dead even as we broach 24 minutes in this game. But I'm looking at Shanks on the scoreboard. Two, zero, and zero. Three items on the Tristana. Two items picked up for Hope now as well as Croco. We are starting to get to that point where the carries come online. But it's just where that gold is. Shanks is just an item ahead of all of the other carries in the game. Yeah. And that's a very scary thought. A lot of DPS can come out of Shanks. Oh, Kale's hunting. We'll get a flash out from Milky Way as well. Shanks just gets a bomb Ooh. of the tower. That's half of the tower gone. Wow, yeah. Hope's here too with Steals the satchel. This should be a tower a going down. The ult comes out and they will just hammer away. Tier 2 taken in the bottom side. Nicely done by AL. Great pressure. And reading the potential brush plate. It's coming out from FPX as well. Ala matching in the top side to make sure they don't lose anything for it. Yep. Very, very good play from AL overall. Baron, it looks like it's not going to necessarily crack open the base by any means, but set them up for a 
very decent and successful next couple of minutes and more importantly as well they've they've closed a lot of that goal gap in fact they've extended the a small gold lead for themselves after being around two and a half three thousand gold down so game state feels a lot better for them three items in the mid lane like we said that void staff coming soon for as well for croco just preemptively building for some of that mr which will likely start to appear in a couple of inventor inventories duck Dom already has a hex drink and will likely finish that out into a more of malmultius so just kind of preparing for that inevitability he knows there's going to be a lot of damage coming his way he knows that the bombs plus lasers from the sky <laughs> it's not it's not a friendly combo is it it's not one that you uh want to be going up against but here we go drake spawning in five seconds and kale knows it starts the fight immediately onto life and shanks following up but kale's the one to go down care the better ad carry out of our mid lane as it seems but al despite losing their support just start this drake up immediately and look to burst this one out drake should go down the tp coming on through croco desperately trying to finish the drake before the enemy arrives croco doesn't have flash he's stuck in the back of the pit Allah is there to protect his jungler moves towards the enemy as croco getting some damage down as well shanks has to flash away but they've done enough to force everyone away oh. doctum oh. does he have the ever the burn on milky way i thought he was brand <laughs> leandries can't quite quite claim milky way's life there got the healing from the jungle camp in the end but AL, they get that dragon and uh, Allah says, get behind me, Mr. President. I mean, yeah. Cards Croco out of that pit. Full heroics coming out from uh, AL there to protect their jungler. I just can't believe that they made that fight work with Kale going down right at the very start of it. 4v5, they get the Drake and they manage to protect their jungler. Impressive stuff from AL. Yeah, it really is. Kale, he does need to watch himself. You know, he's got a lot of health and the owner obviously offers a lot of uh, base resistances because of the double bonus resistances more likely because of the w and even aftershock but when you build raw mogs first you need to be able to survive that upfront burst right and then get out heal back up afterwards and then look for a re-engage after the fact gets himself caught out it works out this time for al but if fpx find another pick like that they'll happily and likely in the next time be more aggressive if they find themselves in a five versus four like that I still can't believe it's only four to seven on the scoreboard, but at the same time, I really can believe it with what's at stake here today. Kale and Life once again sparring as the rest of the teams move their way over. Life with the bomb on his head knows that the fight is over for him and just tries to back away towards the rest of his team. FPX consistently trying to make these proactive plays, but really able to find the angles to turn it into much. Nope, not yet. But they will certainly continue to keep on looking. So let, let's uh, let's talk compositions again. Let's return to how this game is actually going in the context of scaling, right? Because I feel like we're dead even. We're basically 30 minutes into this game. And we've got, you know, this Ziggs composition on the side of AL. And Ziggs, you know, can be very good in the late game. But realistically, you're much more about taking the towers in that mid game. Like, are... Is there a massive scaling advantage with this Carthus or with things like the brand on the other side? Are you not too worried? No, I think with things like brand on the other side, you can kind of, you know, equalize a lot of that, uh, that feel, that pressure. Though we've not seen, you know, a massive, massive pyroclasm or combo come out just yet from Milky Way. And I think that's credit to AL. They're looking for a pick onto him now, though. Kale starts it once again. Bomb onto Milky Way. Where did he blow to smithereens? I mean, he's just gone. Phenomenal combo out from Kale and Hope. They lose the 2v2 early, but they redeem themselves later on into the game. Now Baron started once again for AL. They got one this game already, but Shalahu on the bottom side of the play, and he's close to getting into Mega Nar 4v5. But FBX, care has been found, and now suddenly things look pear shaped and a half. AL back onto the Baron once more. Milky Way not on the scene. Dogdom, he's got one neutral this game. Can't make it into a second, but AL fully oh in control. How is Solar Flare back off a cooldown again? <laughs> Dogdom's gonna go down as Shanks gets the reset and looks for life as well. Shanks is just shredding health bars, and AL, once you give him a minch, they take a mile. I think if I had to wager a guess, that Duck Thumb's wondering the same bloody thing. How is that back off cooldown? Level 11 probably just shifts the cooldown so much lower than he's probably expecting and 
It sets up for another chase down kill and it sets up for a tier 2 on the backside of it as well. Really, really nice for, for anyone's legend. They get 1.5k gold off the back of the Baron. And yeah, it's just about finding that pick onto Milky Way to kick things off. Yep. Now Dragon's up in 50 seconds. Feel like AO are just going to set up for that. Get the lanes ready. Maybe even siege on tier 2 quickly in the mid lane. And then immediately return to that pick that objective up to. And to be fair, their siege is pretty damn good. With a Zix and a Tristana. It's not like towers will last very long if they make a concerted effort with those barrened up minions. Looks like Shanks is going to head to the bot side though. And uh, Ala moving over to the rest of the team. Let's try and push this wave in. 20 seconds on that dragon spawn, but AL not particularly pressed to just get it on spawn realistically. They can always move back to that one. They want to utilize this Baron to full efficiency. Oh my god, the poke onto Dogdom. Is it enough? No. Ormal Mortius protects him with the magic shield, but tier two taken. And in the meantime, Shanks just kept pushing down, but everyone was looking at the mid lane and Shanks took an inhib tower. And now Satchel yep. in the mid lane too. I, I, the whole map Bye. has just fallen to pieces. Yeah, this is tragic for FPX. You understand the thought process, but they're losing more than they probably anticipated. Pace is too quick for them. Care's coming back to base, but I mean, Wait. AL, they're looking at Nexus Towers. They're just going to end the game. The Baron, who cares about Ocean Drake? They're just going to try and finish things off. Ala takes a good chunk of damage. The burn is there, and in goes life for a hero play to save the game. But dogdom has gone down. Shanks is just 1v3 in the backside of the play and kills all three. Shanks is taken over the game. He's done with FPX. He has obliterated them. 1-0 AL phenomenal fight from Shanks and a phenomenal game from anyone's legend. It almost came out of nowhere that game man. FPX had their whole base to work with and I mean still maybe 40-ish seconds left on the Baron but that call to keep care in the top side thinking that AL would take their foot off the gas was just the wrong call. Yeah. Just simply the wrong call and AL called their bluff. They continued to push and they found everything they wanted i mean i thought that game was going on for another five maybe even as long as 10 minutes especially by the pace that we've had today but al and specifically shanks had enough yeah they, they, shanks was done with that game he's like look you can try and go for an engage on my back line I, i'm just i am an assassin i don't look like an ad carry i'm an assassin dives into the backside and just wins the play phenomenal stuff coming out from shanks i think he might just be on his way to another mvp rookie watch out we're going to jump into a break and then we'll head into game number two between al and fbx